Sim. Hey. Um, just FYI, I'm having an incredibly, incredibly anxious day. I don't know if Haley told you to tell you. I haven't told anyone besides. What is that? I said I haven't told anyone besides you all. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I'm sorry. I mean, that's. It's not not any solace that it comes with the territory, but it kind of does. Um. And so. Hoping that you you're able to forge a path ahead. It's, the best hope that you can have right now is that it's just information is useful because it doesn't feel like it's useful for anything else. All right, Tony and Michelle are here. I'm gonna start letting people in. Okay. I had to do a quick fix on Bare Bones profile because the uh, logo was like not the correct size. I went to it and I was like, I was like, ah, <laughs> and I fixed it really quick. So. And you saw the the meal plan. Yeah, I got that. Okay. Yeah. Hello, hello. Hi. I went back to the old standby of just playing stuff from our cookout playlist because it was so good. <laughs> early, early business in this call, but we need to come up with a uh, pumpkin apple playlist. That's there we go. <laughs> yep. We do the new season new playlist on Spotify. Apple bottom jeans, boots with the oh fur. My, God. my um what my best it? friend got married the year that that song came out and it got played six times at his wedding. <laughs> so okay, like, I, what song is that? I don't know if I uh, get low. Get low. You've, you've probably heard it. Have I? Okay. I would be surprised if you haven't. Who's, who's yeah. the artist? Sorry. Mila. Like, Will John. No, it's not get low. It's um what? no. The big question it's, is it's low. It's slow rider. Yeah, T Pain. Or uh yeah, featuring T Pain. Yeah. Oh, so it's, it's not get low, it's low. Yeah. Get yeah. Low is the song that was featured in Need for Speed Underground in two thousand and two. <laughs> This song. 
Michelle, have you, have you heard it? Yes, I have. <laughs> but it talks about pumpkin? Uh, it's an apple. Oh, it's it right says apple, apple bottom cheese. Oh. To say we're going to pull out smashing pumpkins to see. Uh, and not really any one. really to apples. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but apple is one of the first words in the song. That <laughs> so works. I mean, we're assembling a crack squad to make this playlist. We could just do it in real time, and it would be it would be solved for sure. There we go. I forgot how good this song was. Is this the same one or did you change songs? This is Smashing Pumpkins. Tonight, tonight. Oh. This, this is, um, yeah, this song is like a little Hey, Alex. Hey, Alex. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Yeah. Welcome home. How was your trip? Oh, I didn't want to come back. Yeah, <laughs> you're, always... you're in Bend, right? Oh, yes, Bend. Holding your shirt. Oh, I love it there so much. Like, and arguably this trip too, we did so much more than like we typically ever do. And so it was, we extended our trip by a day, I'll put it that way. We, really? <laughs> yeah, it was, it, the weather was like predicted to be like stormy and rainy. And it was like one day maybe of rain. Like, oh, this is that's surprise. huge for the Northwest. Yeah, yeah. no, it really is. So, it's really nice. And did has you that place changed a lot? Say that again? Has that place changed a lot? I mean, Bend has been such an amazing place forever. Yeah, but... I think COVID really, like, COVID really changed the real estate market for there in the sense of, like, basically everybody that works there works remote, and the only people that, like, live there are people who want to live there like you genuinely like first of all you see so many active people everybody's outdoors doing something at all ages of life it is so inspiring um and yeah it's just like even the last like few times that we've been there there's like new housing developments going up everywhere um so it's it's changed a lot in the best of ways yeah it's really cool. I always and not too far from you guys, right? How far of a tr road trip is it? Like six? four and a half hours. Four and a half. Yeah. So That's it's, it's not long. Yeah. It sounds it like it's a really good get. trip. Yeah. <laughs> and they're super dog friendly, which I always talk about. Because <laughs> Wes is the most privileged dog ever. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's fun. <laughs> Dog friendly is an A plus in my book. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How was your trip? Oh, you're back too. How was your trip? It was good. It was really good. Is your husband still there right now? He gets back tomorrow night. Oh, nice. nice. Right. I forgot he was staying. Mm hmm He stayed a week longer than I did. Oh, uh, that's that's nice. Yeah. So yep. He's Oh, I didn't realize um, that. I thought you came back together. Mm-mm. That's a lot of traveling alone. Although I know Tony's done pretty much the same trip alone too. Yeah, I don't mind traveling alone. I actually, I enjoy it. I mean, hell, at this point, I'd probably prefer it because it's either that or managing <laughs> two kids under yeah. five for hours and hours. Like traveling alone <laughs> might be like a luxury. Answer, <laughs> yeah, bring me the Jack and Coke. I'll put on my headphones. Like, don't <laughs> anyone talk to me. <laughs> anytime i travel alone i feel like i'm forgetting something i'm like wait i don't i just have my bag that's it like nothing <laughs> yeah. else yeah. yeah yeah untethered it's kind of like yeah. what? <laughs> i can do anything in this moment <laughs> <laughs> silence is usually the most appealing honestly <laughs> yeah yeah, but yeah and, I think um, traveling alone is fun so and alex you had a birthday right I did. Well, happy birthday. I, it's so funny because so my toe was still broken all through my Ben trip. And so I had to like, we, I was not going to not be active, like for crying out loud. So I definitely 
pushed through pain, but like I was compensating on my foot. So I got the nastiest like blisters all throughout my feet, like just friction blisters. And I was telling Paul, I was like, wow, like my hip hurts, my knee hurts, my this hurts, and I got a year older and now I'm feeling all these things. Like what is this? And I'm like, no, it's just because I'm compensating for my bum leg. But it's were okay. you wearing a boot or just? Oh, I should have. Like, and oh. <laughs> I did the worst thing too. I packed so quickly because yeah, we just planned a very last minute and I, I packed not the best shoes. So I had my walking shoes, which are just these on clouds that I have. And so they have a pretty wide footbed, which they were comfortable. Oh, yeah. But for some reason, I like wanted to wear the pretty shoes on my birthday, which were these like oh. leather tennis shoes that were this narrow. And so my feet got horribly blistered after like the second day there, which was I'm not sure. But it was a good birthday. I just, yeah. Bend is, there's so many food options too that I just, yeah, I was, I went hog wild. <laughs> it was good. That's awesome. You gotta eat, you gotta enjoy the local eats when you travel. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, have, given. I mean, if you're in the Northwest, you just know like there's coffee shops everywhere. And so I did have like my first Americano after not having coffee for a long time. And it was actually really good coffee. So mm -hmm. I didn't get like the horrible shakes, but I did it for the experience because there were so many cute coffee shops in Bend. Like, oh, I'm sure. Yeah, and like one first... of my posted had like swings on it. I was like, oh. No. And how how good does that first coffee after a ca caffeine hiatus make you feel? You're like, I forgot. And you forget what a strong drug caffeine is. I put it that way. I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, I am wired. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> it was. I definitely told Paul, I was like, I probably should have done the half calf, but I was like, not as jittery as I thought I would oh. be. If that sense. So it was good. Yeah. But I think it's because it wasn't, it was just good coffee. It was a good roastery. <clears throat> it makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, why don't we dive into a little bit of the normal happy hour here? We're going to look at the recipes we made for the bare bones ingredient of the month um today um so we'll do that a little bit later in the call but first um michelle since i know your time is a little bit limited on the call mm -hmm. an update on your and Allie's trip to denver last week yeah uh lots of fun we um <laughs> i don't know if anyone saw my stories i booked my ticket wrong on the flight there so <laughs> kudos to delta for helping a girl out and I'm just here to say being kind to those Delta people pays off because, because it was a basic economy ticket and it was booked weeks ago. He's like, we can't change that for you. You'll have to buy a new ticket. I'm like, that's fine. It was my fault. I, I own it. And then five minutes later, clicking around in my ID, he just handed me the boarding pass. And he said, oh. he said, I'm not supposed to do that, but have fun in Denver. And I'm like, <laughs> anyway, so it got off to a bumpy start for me, but that's so nice. Yeah, we had a really great meetup uh, Sunday evening uh, with a couple of creators and Mesa DeVita was there um, at Just Be Kitchen for a couple hours. We just got to visit with them and talk about food social, things that they were up to. Althea has got a lot of fun things coming down the pipeline her way, um, heading to Barbados to help out. So she's, she's remarkable, as is Hema and everyone was just, it's like, you know, you just already know them because we do know them and it was really fun to be in person. So, um, and then Monday we hit the ground running at like seven 30, had our Uber pick us up. We learned you can do a stop on Uber because we had them stop at a coffee place. So Allie could get her coffee. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Of course. Of course. <laughs> she, Eastern time was way behind her coffee needs. And so, um, the Uber driver stopped and let us run in and it was her first ride in a Tesla. She was pretty excited Aww. and he dropped us off at the convention center and Allie had us so organized. She, we just from one to the next just went and we saw about 50 brands um, and talked to them many. I would say we had a solid 10 that were really super interested and excited about what we're doing at food social. Um, 
we'll be following up with a lot of them, obviously, after this long weekend, because a lot of them are just getting home and back from the show, because it technically ended Wednesday morning. So it was a lot of hustle, but it was a lot of good work. And Allie and I ate a lot Monday night because we didn't have breakfast or lunch. We just had samples throughout the whole day. And then we <laughs> realized we are starving. So she found a really great um, gluten-free place and was very careful about, you know, me making sure I didn't touch any of her food because I had croutons on my salad. And she's like, don't touch these chicken tenders with that fork because you could kill me. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. So <laughs> anyways, but it was, uh, I think it'll be a, in the long run, a productive trip. It was a lot of travel in 48 hours and a lot of walking around, but you know, we have this long weekend to relax. So, but it was, it was good. A lot of fun. It was fun to be back in Denver, even for just a little bit. So. It is good that a lot of the uh, big industry trade shows are like the week before three day weekends. Like, so fancy yeah. in June is right before yeah. July. This is oh, before no. day. And, and the one that we haven't really talked about too much yet is that the winter fancy food interestingly i think we brought this up yesterday is co-located with the tastemaker convention in Las right Vegas, yeah the middle of january so that'll be an yeah. interesting one for us to think we about as a group someone there was some brand that was we were talking with that about and they mentioned that tastemakers it was all kind of lumped in together so hmm. yeah Are yeah you guys planning on doing expo west in march most likely, honestly. I mean, that's the biggest show of the year. Um, yeah, not so in one of, day. Not in one day. <laughs> not in one day. No, no. I think that's uh, going to be a two-day affair. Yeah. You know, we got we got to think about like as a group. You know, what what we all want to do. What's most productive for us? You know, walking or booth or meetups or something new that we haven't thought of. There's just yeah. like lots of possibilities. So. Yeah. That'll be um, that'll be a discussion topic ongoing this fall. Um, yeah. That's normally the first or second weekend in March um, mm -hmm. in Anaheim, across the street from Disneyland. So, right around the corner from my old house. Really? Yeah, I used to live um, like Disneyland fireworks were always in my backyard. My mom, my mom and sister are both dentists, so like now they're gripe about it because they always go to the annual CDA, the California Dental Association conference there. And they oh. used to just build a park at our house and just like obviously like walk. Yeah. And like we had to pay for parking and we had an Uber this year. I was like, I'm sure you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> the house, so you're fine. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, I think we're all really excited about Allie and Michelle's trip to um Denver. It sounds like it was really productive. Um and and you know, working to bring brands into our community is, um, it's a long-term thing. So yeah. I think it's great what you all did. And uh, the rest of us are very grateful for your efforts for that. Yeah. So we'll see, you know, next month, we'll see how everything plays out. But yeah, a lot of people were, we're talking about, I should say we, Allie talking about it. I was just the color guy, really. Um, but some people are just like, that sounds so cool. And I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> so anyways lots of fun alley plus caffeine oh she is she i'm a fast walker and i had a hard time keeping up with her like i was like hold on i'm <laughs> Allie just embodies the energizer bunny whenever yeah. i see her literally <laughs> I the energizer bunny. yeah yeah um so a little bit more. Um, do you want to give us any sort of view, either you or Pooja, on season three of the um, That's Delicious podcast? Well, our first guest for season three is right here, <laughs> Allie, or Alex, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. Uh, yeah, we're excited. I'm we're never excited. on this side of the microphone. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You might coach us. Tell your story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, it's weird. I literally, I, I seriously don't think I've gotten interviewed in years. So it'll be, it'll be good. I mean, I'm, uh, we'll, I, we'll try and do you well. Oh. <laughs> we just have, we just have a good time. I think it'll be a really fun conversation. When is it? 
like how long is your guys' turnaround time? You guys, we film it and then is it on the next week or when does season three officially kick off? Uh, what date was it, Pooja? The 18th or I'm not looking at a calendar. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. No, oh, I'm not looking at the right calendar either. Yeah, it was the 18th. Yeah. Yeah. So moving back to an every other week drop for episodes that will allow us to promote the current episode a little bit longer because the one one a week cadence was I forgot to even reshare some in my stories because it was just like oh we're to Wednesday again and so I think moving back to every other week is going to be great and we'll boost our listenership back up because it was really up and then it kind of and it might just have been summer too but it just kind of got a little flatter so summer can be weird like that yeah mm -hmm. so we're excited I've missed it. It's just, it's been weird. Like, oh yeah, I saw my microphone. I put it away so my grandkids didn't, I found them once walking around, like talking to each other. I'm like, okay, not a toy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I kind of snuck it away because they even asked, where's that microphone? I'm like, maybe oh, you need boy. to get them a little toy microphone. I know, clearly. Have mm -hmm. you all yeah. seen um, the apparently kid interview? No. Girl, and, and apparently I've never been on a roller coaster. <laughs> He's so good. Yeah. He's so good. One of my favorites. <clears throat> um, all right. Next up, I'm gonna do a little screen share. By the way, shout out to Reed, who is very close to a hundred recipes on the platform. It's going to happen. I yeah. mean I've been seeing lots of notifications. So I mean it's <laughs> it's happening by tomorrow. Oh, yeah. all right. Not, not goal oriented. Yeah, I, I, I drafts. If I need to work on those, do let me know. I they're all in. I just oh great. I just did it this morning, oh, so great. I have two left to go. There we are. Yeah, here they are. Yeah, it's ninety eight. So close. Yep. Sweet. I'm following Michelle's lead and 100 will be a new exclusive to food social recipe. I hope. <laughs> oh, good. Are you going to let us know any? Uh, it'll, answer? it'll happen tomorrow. Okay. Well, it should. Yeah. It will. Yeah, it, it, it will, because I'm going to, I'm going to hit hundred at the end of the month. That was my goal. And I. Tomorrow's month. Make it happen. <laughs> Oh. All right, so we will circle back to all this, but um, wanted to show you all something that we've been working on this month. I think almost everybody on this call knows, but I want to make sure everybody does know. Uh, we're piloting a new shop by creator feature in our market. Um, so now creators can create a collection of products and things that they like from the marketplace um, and have this all in one sort of curated shop that they can then you we all can share with our followers too so um so this is michelle's there are prompts here where you can have shop the recipe where you can pick marketplace type ingredients and have them highlighted on um, a recipe of your choosing uh, i think we can do up to three there we have the ability to spotlight a hero product. So for Michelle, it's her co-branded product with Legit, which is a, a nice fit there. Um, I realize that that might not be like a, a thing for many creators, but we can do it if, if wanted. Um, and then we can have, um, have you pick up to 30 of your favorite products throughout the marketplace. And there are so many brands and products on the marketplace now. I'll do a little bit of a quick tour there, but um, we've had another 16 or 17 brands join Food Social this month. So now we're up to 50 um, and most of them are in this marketplace. So it's an amazing collection of products that you can pick from. We can even do neat stuff where we have um, recipe videos that have shoppable placements in them. Um, you'll see that this will go to the next one as soon as it concludes. So this is it's a really neat, neat way to make shoppable content that helps support food social and you as a creator. Um, recognizing that um, 
there might be some brands in here that you are not familiar with. Um, we're actually doing an offer right now um, for anybody that's interested to get a $50 gift card to the marketplace for you to go and shop and try brands that you've been wanting to try and, and haven't checked them out yet. Um, just so that you can have familiarity with, you know, a variety of new brands. Um, you'll see some on here that, that are, that are new. Um, I don't want to call any out specifically to play favorites, but there's a lot of brands in here that, that, you know, we're, we're really excited to have, um, on the food social platform now. So go and, um, check it out. If you want to, um, participate in this, there's a form for you to fill out to make your creator shop. Um, and we, we help do the implementation for you. So you can go and see reads reads is, um, you know, the format is kind of similar. Um, but then you have this great link that you can share with your followers. So this is a uh, good for you, good for food social sort of thing where it, it's helping us get some momentum for the marketplace. It's helping you have this all in one shareable um, curated shop that's really nice for your followers to check out. Um, and so it's it's and it's good for the brands that are on the platform, too, because their stuff is directly shoppable on here. Anyone want to add anything on on that? I'll pause for a dramatic effect. I have a question based on something a creator just asked me. Um, is there a way for creators to track their commissions? So when you, you say commissions on, so that, that was what I was going to bring up is also along with this, um, all creators are going to get uh, five five percent at least right now. We're just starting with something um, of uh, affiliate commission. So there'll be a link with it that you can use to drive people to that particular storefront, and um, you will get a commission on anything they buy. Sort of like you know Amazon that way. Um, and uh, as far as tracking the commission, it'll actually be through the um, it's the app. Up promote is the name of the affiliate uh, commission app. So we will be rolling that out as well to all creators. We were um, trying to figure out the best way to do it. Um, we were definitely going to do it with the uh, August payment email. However, we're, we're also thinking we would actually put it on the portal page, like the link to the uh, affiliate and then, you know, allow the creators to go in that way as well. So. Thank you. We're also, we're trying to work on, we don't really have this set up on a development standpoint, but um, the idea of also when people are on your recipes and they click buy is allowing that to be tracked from an affiliate commission perspective as well. Um, we don't have that develop in that development isn't there yet for sure but um, it's something we're working on. Um, well, if anyone has any questions on that, they can just reach out to me or pretty much anyone. And we'll get you, get you set up. But that's um, this, this marketplace is a, um, a big focus right now. Um, something that we're, that we're building that's good for creators, good for the brands and good for the home cooks too. Cause there's this a really convenient aspect of being able to shop these things all in one place. So um, we're focusing a lot of effort on that right now. Um, August was one of our best months ever. Um, our home, so just our year to date updated stats, our home cook community grew 450% year to date. Um, so that's quite a bump from the number that we port, we reported in July. Um, the creator community grew 157%. So that's bumped up as well. We're um, just shy of 6,000 recipes on the platform. We're at 5,800. Uh, we should hit 6,000 this month, which is very exciting. Um, Next month. I mean, September. I'm already, I have already moved to September. <laughs> yes. Um, 
And then uh, we have 750 additional new products uh, listed in the market in August. So things are things are humming right along. We're positioned really well to have a great fall. We've got exciting things coming up. Um, we've got this pumpkin and apple ingredient of the month for the month of September, which in my mind has already started. Okay. Um, so it's a just for funsies kind of one, but um, you can pick, you can make a recipe featuring apple or pumpkin or both. I don't know if I've really seen too much of that, but um, it's just a fun sort of ongoing debate that I'm sure you all, I don't know, raise your hand if you're going to do an apple one. And raise, and raise your hand, parentheses, again, if you're going to do a pumpkin one. Probably. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of what I think, right? Like most people don't actually like find it super polarizing. Although once in a while, somebody will say, oh, I can't stand pumpkin or I don't know. I would say I'm team apple for sweet and team pumpkin for savory. Mm, I just need chocolate with my pumpkin. Mm. That's all I require for something for pumpkin to be good. It has to include chocolate. It just has to happen after August is over. I'm sorry. I'm I know. Not Insane. Annoyed that pumpkin spice lattes came out. Yeah. Week. August first. It's the beginning of fall. <laughs> no. <laughs> CP, no. That's no, but that's what CPGs believe is because we we oh. cater we cater to like the two percent of people that are like waiting with their flannel and you know their, oh, their no. boots like they want to have their. I think it's higher than two percent though. <laughs> I think it's ninety percent. <laughs> <laughs> amazing well i i love uh, even in slack like you can you can already tell there's like a ton of enthusiasm for this one because it's just fun um I and i i think you know for all of us as creators it's also nice to have something like well within the wheelhouse of what you know you're going to share in the fall anyway so it kind of just like fits like perfectly into the box yeah it doesn't really add to your load it shouldn't if i mean i don't know so I'm excited for that one too. Um, anything okay. else? We're I'm, still... gonna go. I'm just gonna go, guys. Sorry, I got a I it got was... a date with my daughter for lunch and her husband. Just... Yeah, um, I won't be on for the bare bones. Can I drop my little brief description to one send it of to you? me? Do you okay. do you have thirty seconds? Do you want to look at it super quick? Sure. I thought okay. bare bones was gonna be on. Yeah, no. I think there was a miscommunication. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, hold on. Let me get to you. Sorry, your oh. I didn't mean to. <laughs> no, I'm glad you didn't just disappear. I mean, we can yeah. we can dive right in. Okay. Um, you should be on soon. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to your. Are, but we're recording it. Yeah, so it's good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. We are on your profile. I should have just gone to the, the meal plan actually, so. Michelle, tell us about your project. Which one is yours? Green chili mini muffins. I think it's on the bottom row, third. No, no, sorry. Up under chicken. Under chicken. Yeah, right there. Up. Bottom middle. There Great. you go. Yeah. And um, by the way, we will get a new format for these meal plans sometime soon. <laughs> they like, they kind of need some work. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I love green chilies. Green chilies run in my veins. I love muffins. And so I wanted the combination to come together here and we all love sweet muffins and those are the most popular, but these are so great for soup season. They go with chili. You can do them with, you can change out and instead of using cumin and green chili, you could use pepperoni. Anyways, um, it's a super, and you can make big ones if you want. That's a large one, which I just, I love the muffin top on that, but these I topped with some crushed corn chips just because it kind of goes with it. But I, the added, I used the chicken bone broth as the seasoning along with some cumin and oregano, um, but it adds protein. So it is great for like an after school snack or grabbing and going to soccer games or, you know, whatever you might have going. So it's a fun taste. They're delicious. I was so happy with the way they turned out. So there you go. I'm all for a savory muffin. Yeah, yeah, I love muffins. They're just a perfect little handheld treat. So love it. Anyway, yeah. They were a lot of fun. 
<laughs> and just so Reed knows, this is a regular muffin, Reed. I did what you said, and I have options for paleo and gluten-free down in the notes so that if people want to switch it up and make it paleo or gluten-free, I know they work just as well with this variation. So. Make it paleo. That'd be a good cookbook title. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Anyways, all right, everyone have a great, happy, long weekend. Bye, Michelle. Michelle nice Bye. seeing you. Everyone. All right, take care. Oh, Jesse just popped in. Hey, Jesse. Hi, Jesse. Hi. Bye, I joined. <laughs> nice. You're right on time. <laughs> awesome. All right, should we start rolling through these? I think yeah. a, lot, a lot of folks aren't here. Pooja, do you have notes on any of these or we'll just do them as we go or? Yeah, we can just do them as we go. I might have notes on a couple, um, but not a ton of them. Yeah. I don't, I feel like I've never had a sweet corn pasta. Has anyone here ever done something like that? It not sounds delicious. Bad, like a sweet corn cake. Cool. Neat. Sweet corn ravioli is really good. Ooh, oh, yeah. I haven't, I haven't done it, but I've had it. It's very good. That's an interesting idea. This one's beautiful too. I love the I love the colors. I'm a sucker for little cherry tomatoes. This one is Colleen's. Wow, so pretty. Looks so delicious. I wonder mm -hmm. if she made those. I don't think so. Oh. Has anyone here ever made tortellini? I bet Amanda has. Scratch. Yeah. Amanda. I have. It's a lot of work, but yeah. it's good. Yeah. I tried it once. It was an epic fail for me, so. <laughs> <laughs> Making pasta is pretty easy, but, like, you have to know all the, like, crazy little tricks but once you have it down then it's can be easy but tortellini is definitely more difficult after doing the podcast interview with you amanda i feel like i have a better understanding of your skill set so the moment <laughs> phil said that i was like i know <laughs> <laughs> so funny all right not alleys bone broth butter quinoa she said that they eat a lot of rice in their family and they wanted to switch it up and try some quinoa. Um, and this has become a staple because they love it. I love this. Not not too many ingredients. I don't I don't know how much we've talked about it, but the research that Lucy did over um the summer, like in July, that was like a big theme with home cooks. And I we've actually been meaning to share the the research with with everyone, but it could be that we might end up making some sort of category that displays recipes that have fewer ingredients because it seems pretty clearly like home cooks are interested in that. So mm -hmm. that recipe would fall into that category. I'm That's the really opposite. Neat. Hmm? That's really neat. I actually, sometimes if the recipe is too long, I don't make it, even though I like cook all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, one of even like when... And Michelle is not here, but even one of the things that when we went to Siete in February, when we were creating the recipe, I mean, could have just been because they wanted us to do seven ingredients or less, but the theory behind it is the less ingredients, the easier it is, and someone will be more likely to cook it. Mm -hmm. So they, yeah. they wanted us to do small ingredient recipes. Yeah. If I, if I look at a recipe, if it has a good number of ingredients, but they're like pantry staples and I that I already have, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But if it's a recipe that calls for a lot of ingredients that I have to go buy, then that's another thing. Yeah. Oh, this one is from Maggie. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. So she sent me a little blurb because um, she was unable to attend. She said, my dairy-free chicken sausage pesto pasta is another example of making wheat night weeknight cooking fun flavorful and wholesome working two jobs and training for triathlons means dinner has to take less than 30 minutes bonus points if it only dirties two dishes a pot and a blender the dairy-free chicken sausage pesto pasta gets an extra boost of nutrients from a veggie packed pesto made even more flavorful and more packed with protein thanks to bare bones instant chicken broth 
Man, it was like a commercial. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> get yours today. Yeah, get yours today. Yeah. Get, get yours today, literally right here. <laughs> get yours today. You're just it's just actually as easy as clicking add to cart. Just add to cart. <laughs> That's super funny. Free shipping on Food Social Market. Free shipping. Reed, how did she do on the pesto? I mean, you can't, you kind of can't mess it up, but yeah, it's good. (laughs) This is from Sarah, I think from Food Allergy Moms and More, right? Yep. It's another short, um, the past year have been like short ingredient lists. Yeah, I think, you know, it kind of makes sense, right? It's in the spirit of the product too, um, mm-hmm. just because the product is like a little bit of a a shortcut type item, which, you know, really good products do that. They help make your time in the kitchen more efficient. Um, I kind of like that a lot of folks have made easier recipes. Mm-hmm. I know whose this is without even looking. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda, your um, your style is so distinct. Do you want to talk to us about your recipe? Yeah, well, it's funny that you you were saying that. I mean, because really, the <clears throat> I tried both packets a couple times, just like drinking it and um, like tasting the flavors, and there's so much flavor packed into them mm. that you it does allow you to make simple dishes with it. You know, it's not like Pooja, you were saying, you know, if it has a bunch of pantry ingredients that I already have, you know, seasonings or things like that, it's not a big deal. You kind of get it all in, all in one. So I know we're still technically in August, but like when I was tasting it, I'm like, this like screams fall to me. And so I kind of went a little bit more, uh, kind of on that like earthy fall flavors, but threw some sun-dried tomatoes in there to brighten it up a little bit, but, um, cooking the pasta in, you know, chicken broth, you know, it's not like a traditional thing. Um, but it makes it super creamy. And, um, you know, I had the the little bit of a sweetness from the sun-dried tomatoes and the salty from the Parmesan cheese. And I don't know, there was just so much flavor in the broth that really added to that. You can keep the ingredients pretty simple. And can I ask you a non food question about this? Yeah. The, the color theory between the color of the food and the, the willow, um, you know, plates and the blue background and the, the blue and yellow packaging, like, is that, is that like an artistic, like, ve- like it, to me, it comes off as being tasteful and very deliberate. Is that part of your thinking process when you go and shoot things like this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're complementary colors and then playing off the the food packaging. I I always set up my shoots ahead of time and I think about it um, mostly because sometimes I can get scattered rain, especially if my kids are around. So planning all out what kind of shots I want and what colors I want, then I can think, okay, this is what the dish is going to look like and like pull in those colors, whether it's, um, you know, from the linen or the packaging or things like that. So like, you know, traditionally sometimes like this pasta is harder to, to style just because it's more bland color. So I try to come up with other things that can kind of brighten it up. So it's not too dull and, and one note. Yeah. I mean, this is your photography and, and especially what I'm seeing here is just like really amazing. I feel like Amanda would be a great person to lead um, another photography workshop during a happy hour. Just subtly volunteering you. No pressure. (laughs) Voluntold. Yeah. Voluntold. (laughs) Well, just because like you're so intentional and like hearing you talk about your thought process and stuff, I feel like would be so helpful for people who like me, who flail when they're trying to take photos. (laughs) Yeah, I, I would be happy to do that really really beautiful stuff uh okay let's keep going i definitely jive with anybody who's grating fresh parm over their dish that's me on everything even like salads for sure
Looks like a lovely weeknight meal. Mm -hmm. Jesse, here's yours. This one's also bursting with color and beautiful. Gorgeous. You want to talk to us Thank about you. this? Yeah, so I have actually been making this lemon pasta dish for like forever and I've never written it down. Um, and um, But I have actually never tried the Rome broth pa packets before and I love them because like everyone else has said, they're just extremely flavorful. So this is a creamy pasta dish, but it's not like where it's like Alfredo, where it's like swimming in this bowl of cream. It's more enough to like basically just like coat the noodles. Um, so what I love about the putting the packets in it, cause I've made it with bone, with bone broth in the past, but it can tend to almost become too much liquid. And so what I loved about the packets is that I got the flavor of adding bone broth to the dish without it being, um, without it kind of changing the texture of the cream sauce, you know? Um, so yeah, I, um. It's just a great summer little dish. Um, I ended up just doing tomatoes in it since I have like five billion in my garden right now. Um, but I'll make this dish with all sorts of veggies. I kind of rotate it through kind of what I'm growing. Honestly, like sometimes it'll just be kale and I'll add chicken to it or whatever. But it's kind of my seasonal pasta dish that I just like switch up all the time. So <laughs> I love a good light pasta dish that you can just like you said, switch out any veggies. It's really mm -hmm. customizable based on what you have. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely one of my favorites. I'll make it, I'll add way more lemon for me. Like, but my husband's always like, this is too tart, but I really love lemon. So I'll like double up on the zest when I'm making it just for me. <laughs> I'm the same. They just look so inviting, Jesse. I just want to like grab a fork and just dive right in. <laughs> okay, that was the goal. <laughs> this is another one from Martha. The timings of our um, happy hours are difficult for her because she's in Hawaii, so it's quite early for her. Cry me a river. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I just wish I lived there. <laughs> <laughs> I know small price to pay for living in Hawaii. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> this looks great, beautiful. Looks like a, a comforting sort of meal. Very comforting. Oh, pretty. I think Nanette said she was traveling and unable to make it. Yeah, she's traveling. She's she's new to the community, right? She joined last month. Yep, she joined last month. Yeah, let's give her a little profile shout out. 25 recipes already, go Nanette. Crushing it. <laughs> She's great. These are pretty. Wait, let's take a pause for this. If anyone doesn't know, I've got a wicked sweet tooth. <laughs> oh yeah, we already saw Michelle's. Mm-hmm. Prime ingredient shredded tacos by Leah. These are cute. That really is the theme I'm seeing here is that people aren't needing to use a ton of ingredients because the bare bones packets pack such a punch. Yeah, look at this, four, right? She said five ingredients. So is she lying? I th maybe she just missed the tortillas. <laughs> <laughs> we can always fix that up later. No problem. And now to the beef. Where's the beef? Right, Reed? The best, the best advertisement of all time. Where's the beef? <laughs> <laughs> I love that Priscilla went sweet with this. Wow, this is such a neat idea. Yeah, I want to try it now. Mm -hmm. Such a cool recipe. Mm -hmm. I love having a good hot chocolate when I come in from sledding with the kids. Wake up tonic.
Yeah. Ooh. Right? I mean, beef, beef bone broth, lemon, apple cider vinegar, and ginger. That would that would do it. That sounds like a delicious way to wake you up. It's kind of a great, great thing. You know, Lara, she um she posted something a few months back, this one, which got me to buy another spice company's product, the uh tahine stuff. But I I went and tried this. This was actually delicious too. Um would have worked with our spices, but I wanted to know for sure what it was like. <laughs> it was was very good. Have you experienced I'm, the tahine? Hope I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> you are saying it correctly. Okay. <laughs> this one is Jean's. Um, she gave me permission to speak on her behalf. So um, she is Asian, in case you didn't know. And she loves trying to play with different types of Asian flavors and Asian foods and trying to make them more accessible. And so she used their beef bone broth to create an accessible version of hot pot that you can just make in your microwave at home. Hmm. I love how many veggies she put into it. Super cool. Yeah, being a being a sweet tooth kid, I always need more ways to get in veggies. <laughs> that looks like a good one. Yes. These look so good. Reach out, Alex, let's go. <laughs> uh, still like talking about these tacos because that's how good they were. I was supposed to make them with because we have an elk roast in our freezer and I was supposed to make it with elk, but I haven't remade them. But um, beer, yeah, uh, this was kind of my shorthand way-ish way um, to use bare bones and using their bone broth versus just kind of regular chicken broth. It adds a little bit more protein and it definitely gave it a lot more of a robust flavor. Um, but unfortunately, this one does usually take a lot of, I know you can buy birria kits um, pre-made, but I definitely think that making the chili sauce from scratch and everything definitely added to it um, a lot easier than I thought though, but that's just cooking in an Instant Pot. <laughs> uh, well, a lot of those are pantry staples too. That's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say also. This is a lot of stuff that likes, you know, salt, pepper, you know, you probably have avocado yeah. in the pantry. Honestly, I want to make a shorthand version of this which this is just my theory that it's going to work, but I'm pretty sure I can use a jar of enchilada sauce instead of Ooh. the light chili. So I'm going to try a shorthand version of it next. And I'm going to try one in the slow cooker too, so I can get two options. Um, but yeah, it's it was so good. It was so stinking good. <laughs> I will make this for you all as we have birthday together. <laughs> Looks great. I would be down for this for sure. When I was and we had up. the best part about it, honestly, was like the broth. We had so much like leftover broth because the mm. chicken, the beef, as you saw on like one of those plates, one of our friends like just <laughs> found it on the meat, like on the side of it. But we had so much of the broth left over, and I always have ground beef just made at my house. And so we were making like ground beef dishes and then using that same, it's called consume, um, with everything else. So it was really good and I'm all about the lime so mine is very I know I think it was Jesse or Amanda was saying they like a lot of lemon I'm the same exact way I make limeade out of like all of my Mexican dishes so looks great only a few left I think Martha did three recipes yeah Martha's Martha's thrown down. A little pot pie action. Geographically, this is the one that's closest to me. Tasha only lives 15 minutes from us. <laughs> this looks great. Did you get to try these? No, no, we haven't seen Tasha since um, her son's birthday last month. Mm, she was out of town for a little bit too, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
So for those that don't know, Tasha is, um, she's very science minded and, and has leveraged that to become an amazing forager. She forages for mushrooms and uh, has like a really incredible garden. And so I'm guessing that, yeah, I happen to have foraged a large amount of, and she's using the scientific name for oyster mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> she's such a cool and interesting person though i'm really glad that we became friends with them and her husband is like one of my favorite people he's hilarious this looks delicious tasha look at those mushrooms i should really get her to teach me that because there's there's so many mushrooms around here in pittsburgh all right and then this last one from erica Looks good. It does look good. Well, super big shout out to Bare Bones for sponsoring August's Ingredient of the Month. Uh, Kate and Ryan are amazing people. Um, I've known them for quite a while. They're they're really good people too. Their products have evolved so much over the years. Um, we'll make sure that we get Kate and Ryan on a happy hour sometime in the future so they can come in and talk about their products. Um, sorry that the... the um, Scheduling didn't work out for that today. That was a little bit of a, a mishap, but we'll have them on in the future. And they they do amazing, amazing products. They're in a lot of grocery stores. Um, and it's interesting to, to hear them talk about their journey from to forming that company and, and why they did it and and the the way that their products have evolved over time from being frozen broth to shelf stable to now having these these powders, I, even I don't know the full story. So we'll, we'll make sure that we get them on in the future. Um, and so pumpkin apple coming up in September. Um, if anyone has any um, interest in doing one of the curated creator stores on our market, please reach out. Um, I think we dropped the link in. Um, it's, uh, we would love to have anybody in our community do it. So if you're listening to the recording after the fact, just please just reach out. Um, anything you can tell me if you need the link, um, again, or can't find it. Anyone have anything else they want to chat about before we wrap up here? Okay. Have a great long we weekend. Don't have, we don't have Allie with the, uh, the ending music, right? Bam, bam, bam. Closing time. <laughs> One last, last call for alcohol. So finish your whiskey. Nice. All right. Good seeing you all. Have a great, safe, delicious Bye. Labor Day weekend. And uh, catch you next week. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye.